I took advantage of it because this yeah. is how I decided to see myself. And I was like, you know what? If I'm to run a company one day and I use the company I was working in as an example, yeah, I need to understand what everyone does. So I used to imagine myself as, you know what? I'll be a project manager one day. At the same time, I was running Artematics as my side hustle. But my aim in my aim in that company was to be a project manager. And in order to get there, I needed to understand what everyone does. Project managers there, who did you really understand everyone's role? Depended on um, um, workshop managers or other supervisors to explain some things to them. But I found myself in a situation where, you know, I understood everything. So it would be best if I get to that position. And getting there was really difficult. I, I never really got there. I, I got to the position before project manager. Mm. My last position before I left was project engineer. So I was one step close and I just quit. Mm. Right. Selassie. Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I hope you can see me well. Yes, I can. Can you hear me very well? Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, very clearly. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. And okay. Uh, how's Accra? Um, it's 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 busy. Accra is really busy. You know, there's always traffic around, and but funny enough, everyone is trying to leave the country. So it's it's a mix between the two. You know, you say people are trying yeah, to leave the country. Leave the country. Oh yes, yes, yes. A lot of people are leaving the country. Oh, so they are doing really exactly. Crazy what uh young people in nigeria exactly exactly yeah? yes is the jackpa right. Jack syndrome japa season exactly yes. yeah I'm, I'm, in fact i'm i'm writing a script on that you know oh, wow. yeah yeah I, in fact i i was i i started writing it this this afternoon you know oh i see yeah yeah see. even though i i did it Jakpa myself uh, nearly nearly twenty years ago, yeah. but uh, I'm 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 trying to convince young Africans not to do that anymore. Yeah, it's difficult to convince them actually. It's very difficult to convince them. So yeah, um, we 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 I usually see people tweeting about it and having discussions on social media about yeah. the rate at which in the country and it's really really bad. And there's this current discussion going on, and the question is, what finally convinces you to leave Ghana? And people are just sharing their views and thoughts. Yeah, I'll look for the tweet and send it to you. Oh wow, that's uh, yeah. that's crazy. Also, can you please give me one second? I need yeah, sure, to... sure. Okay, yes. So yeah, I'll I'll look for the tweet and send it to you. Okay. Most people are trying to go to Canada, especially Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the same, the same. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that's that's for that's for skilled people okay yes skilled exactly. people skilled workers, want yeah. to go to canada mm -hmm. and the less skilled people are trying to get come to europe yes exactly you know? and they are yeah. taking this dangerous journey mm -hmm. from the sahara desert to the yep uh, through libya the, yeah mm -hmm. the sea and you know every day i i watch See, seeing boats on treacherous waters, yep, crossing the channel. Yep. My god, it's, it's crazy! It's yes, really a lot. I'm like, you. I mean, yeah. uh, there's there's so many people who have died on these journeys, yeah. you know, it's so it's so bad, so bad. But and we also we are also looking for change in the continent, That's the yes, problem. yes. I see. See, I, I understand the reason why many of them are living, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, like, in my, in my writing today, the point is this. If all of us who are able to are living, mm -hmm. okay, this dream of making Africa develop yeah, will be a pipe dream. 
Oh, of course, of course. It's it's see, looking I, like it. Yeah. See, this time is see it. It's very important. See, uh, all the things that make it more uh, urgent mm -hmm. for Africa to develop in the next two decades. Yeah. Number one, climate change. Okay. And mm -hmm. if the kind of people who are needed to implement all the things that, that, that Africa needs are living, what does yes. Africa become? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Selassie, nice to see you today. Nice to see you too. Nice to see you too. I like, let's, I like let's, the let's start. Let's start my my normal way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please introduce yourself to my audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. Okay. So um my name is Selassie Gumado. I'm Ghanaian and I am 27 years of age. I currently um own an art agency and collective called Artem Artist, which has been in existence since 2018. Mm. Um, I wear many hats, but currently my main focus is on creative direction. Okay. So my title in the company is creative director, but I'm also the co-founder of the company. Yeah. So um, usually, um, I find myself even Googling the meaning of creative director because in many spaces, you find different definitions for it. And I usually create, plan, and deliver strategic visions for the company and the artists I work with. You know, I also oversee projects. So I'm sort of um, a graphic designer, projects manager, artist manager, all in one. And it's, yeah, well, it's a as, very as, interesting. As an, as an entrepreneur, this is mm -hmm. what they do. Okay, exactly. You have yeah. you wear multiple hats. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. grow the and business. I feel like the the title creative director is the best term for people like me. Yeah. People who do a lot of things at once. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So yeah. So wow. this is who yeah. I am and this is what I do. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So the the agency is called At Atematics, right? Artematis, yeah, Artematis. Okay, A R T good, good. E M A R T I S, yeah. Very good. Now, tell 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 us more about it. Uh, give us the history, the 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 growth from uh, two thousand eighteen to now, 18, yeah. and then tell us yeah. a little bit about uh, what you are envisioning in the future. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So. Um, Artematis started in 2018. The idea came up in 2017, just when I had finished university. I studied mechanical engineering and I graduated in 2017. So right before my national service, you know, in Ghana, we have this national service where you have to work in a corporation for one year yeah. and funded by the government. Yeah, exactly. So um, I had this idea due to the fact that one, I always wanted to be an artist when I was younger. I used to be one of those kids who used to draw in their notebooks all the time ah, and, you know, sketch. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so I actually wanted to go into art. And I always saw myself as someone who could invent things. And my parents offered me two options. My mom offered engineering and my dad offered medicine. And I had to choose one. So <laughs> I ended up choosing med um, engineering. And okay. that's what led me to doing that course. And the second reason is I realized that there wasn't a great market for artists in the country mm. as a 28. And I, I've always found myself coming up with business ideas ever since I was a kid. When I was in primary school, I used to do assignments for money, especially yes. um, technical drawings. Exactly. And I used to do assignments for money in, in high school. I used to organize bus trips from school to home. You know, when we were vacate, yeah, I used to organize bus trips to the house. And I also found myself doing the same thing in university, doing okay. assignments for people for money and even helping. 
people in level 400 with their projects works when I was in level 300 mm. and I was doing a lot of drawings as well. Exactly. So with Atom Artists, what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a space where artists could just sell their works. And yeah. it wasn't tied to any specific artist. It could be any random artist. Okay. So I met this friend of mine, Rita Lucia. She's half Nigerian, half Ghanaian. And okay. I pitched my idea to her and she seemed interested. And we came up with a, an online site, an online shop, online shop basically, where um, we had this platform available to sell artworks. And we used to sell artworks for relatively cheap prices, you know. Yeah. And that, um, that's how it starts. Okay. Exactly. That's how it starts. Uh, yeah. So we, in the first couple of months, we realized that we made a few mistakes. One, we didn't focus on gathering a client base you know ah, getting okay. people to know about it you just put it online and expect people to just run towards it and at the time Ghanaians were not really interested in buying things online i remember that a lot of um, online shops had just started so Ghanaians mm -hmm. were now adjusting to it and even those shops used to work with um, wholesale goods electrical appliances and they were not even making as much as they do now so I decided to pivot into organizing events because okay. um, there was this lady who advised me that Ghanaians love to invest in experiences. So I asked myself how I could merge art into creating experiences for people. And we decided to start hosting local exhibitions. Yes. So these were ticketed events. And because we didn't have a, a, a collector base, we used to split the profits with the artists. Mm. So we, we ran this for a while, for about two years. And at the end of, um, let's say in the beginning of 2020, COVID struck and oh. everything was a mess. Yeah. Oh. It was a huge mess. Oh, COVID, so... COVID, COVID, COVID. <laughs> Luckily if I for tell me, you my story was still... for that. Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah. It, it, it affected COVID, COVID is a lot of less than a case. Especially oh, yeah, online, the online things. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah it really then, affected a lot. It also helps online business to grow. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So um, we didn't really have uh, a presence in 2020. We decided to just do Instagram Live because that was the most popular thing back then. You yeah. know, everyone was doing on Instagram Live, and that's the um, the route we took. But even that wasn't bringing money; it wasn't really helping us. And luckily for me, I was still working in nine to five in an engineering company in Tema, Ghana. So that was sustaining me for a bit. Before COVID, I was using my salary to fund these events. And yeah, so in 2021, I realized that the events will take a while to pick up mm. and and during that time when we we're doing events i realized that a lot of people had started something similar uh, mostly time to sip and paint events and i realized that covid was a time for deep reflection for a lot of people so if i came back from covid and decided to go the same route i would have a lot of competition <laughs> so, yes <laughs> I decided to pivot into um, fully managing artists and setting a platform that will basically be the bridge between artists and then the primary and secondary market. So in 2021, I really worked hard on it. Um, and the funny thing is I actually got COVID in 2021. So it slowed me down a bit, but yeah. I didn't give up. Yeah, so I pushed, I pushed with the help of some of my colleagues and friends. We just made this work and we got our first international feature on Artnet, which was in August 2021. Mm. And that set the pace for a lot of things. Um, eventually, we had the opportunity to go to Artex Lagos, um, one of our artists. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, we had a huge offer from... Um, an auction house in London, Phillips Auction House. It's one of the oldest auction houses. Exactly. We just got a random email. It was actually an Instagram message. And the way it happened was so funny. I didn't even know the woman I was texting was working there. I guess she was 
trying to see the type of person I was before she told yeah. me about it. So, wow. Yeah, I yeah, it took about a month before she actually told me her true intentions. And as soon as she asked me for it, I just jumped on it. I just told her, you know what, I will do it. I quit my job. <laughs> I, I just left, I left everything behind. And I was like, you know what? I have to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah. And yeah, I quit my job on 1st November 2021. Well, we, we, we get to your job because there's something interesting oh, yeah. there I want to talk about. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. So now we've had multiple exhibitions with our artists around the world and in Ghana. And Congratulations. Yeah, we, are, we, are, we are recognized as a, as a good brand, a growing brand. You know, good. And we know the rights. We keep knowing more rights people. So I'm actually grateful. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I have, uh, I've, I've featured two great artists on this, on this, on this platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have a friend, uh, she's the wife of a friend who is okay. a great artist, uh, Nena Okore, you know? Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I've, uh, attended about, I think three of our exhibitions in London. She lives in, in Chicago. Okay. And I've told her, uh, I've told her, see, yes, I come to your exhibitions, see mm -hmm. your beautiful works, but mm -hmm. uh, me and many, many of people, many people like me, mm -hmm. even though we, we come here, we see these things, we don't really understand art. <laughs> yeah. See, mm -hmm. this this is this is this is something that we need to on the, we need to do some little work to to actually enjoy the 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 magic that yeah. artists do. Now, for, yeah, for, when, when yeah. it comes when it comes to performance artist uh, art, okay, I love that. I, see, I'm a, I'm a big fan of rock music. Okay? Oh, wow. Rock, nice. oh, I'm a big, big fan of rock music. Okay? Yeah. And see, every, nearly every day, I watch... I'm, I, I love drummers. Okay? So I watch yeah. drummers. Today, I've watched drummers maybe 20 minutes. You know? Mm -hmm. I do this all the time. On, on weekends, I pick... I, 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 I have two hours watching my old uh rock bands that i used to mm -hmm. love you know i watch every weekend i, I really hours. like um, dash streets okay okay dash streets, yeah, really rush uh led zeppelin you know i old old yeah. old uh, band but my, my my point is this when it comes to art like visual visual, 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 visual arts I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not very, I'm not very, uh, what's the word now? I don't Drawn. really appreciate them. Yeah. See, I get you. Uh, see, one of the great artists from Nigeria, she, she's from my hometown. Okay. A great oh. artist from my hometown. I see him. I've gone to his house several times. I look at the wonderful He's an artist and a, and 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 uh, an archi architect. He does. Okay. His, I've gone to his house. I've seen his work. Many people see him as a great artist. Yet I yeah. still don't. I, I still don't appreciate the mm -hmm. breadth of work that he does. Yeah. You know. So I I think that's that's why I, what, when I when I heard about you and what you do as a promoter of art, I wanted to talk to you because, see, art in the world is one of the biggest investments. Oh, yeah. Okay? It's a yeah. big investment. And when people like myself don't understand art, they will be losing out from the appreciation and losing out from the investment yeah. and will not will not be able to help you guys in a in a little way by by buying your your works so yeah. tell me how can people like me 
get to start enjoying visual arts? What, what's your recommendation, recommendation for us? So one thing I always tell people is dedicate time to understanding the stories first. Mm. The stories of the artists. Because I'm not going to lie to you, before 2021, I used to think people or um, the, the collectors or heavy investors in the art scene were mainly interested in the visual aspect. But it turns out the story matters just as much as the product itself. Okay. So the best thing I would suggest is to read on the artists and to understand where they are coming from mm. and why mm. they are doing mm. what they are doing. Because if you attend, one way of doing that is by attending art exhibitions. Yeah. And sometimes um, some, some exhibitions have these um, artist talks just before the show. Yeah. So it's best to go early and listen to the artists and understand them. Mm. It's like having one of your favorite musicians and then hearing them or listening or watching interviews on YouTube yeah. or something. It makes like you enjoy like them some more. Yeah. Exactly. Knowing about their stories, it's one of the best ways to understand artists and when they are coming where they are coming from. Secondly, try to um follow for example if you meet an artist that is new try to follow their journey okay it's not um for, for a new collector let's just call you a new collector for a new collector i wouldn't say jump into buying artworks from new artists immediately try to study some of them yeah. and the thing is if you miss out on one there are many other artists that will come along the way so just try and follow the story of let's say two or three artists and see how their Are journey cool? is okay yeah it doesn't take it doesn't take much just you know from time to time just follow exhibitions they have and right now we have a lot of artists on instagram instagram is the best place to discover artists and follow their stories and once you do that you get to understand what a journey of an artist looks like whether the um, they, they, they fall after a while or they keep mm. rising or they hit a plateau and never move up. Yes, mm. so there are so many stories you can follow. Well, and see, then... Instagram is one 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 the platform that uh, my old person, my old 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 man hasn't uh, mm. done a lot of work in. in. See, I, I, I have yeah. a profile but I never, mm -hmm. I never post anything. <laughs> wow. Instagram, Instagram helps me a lot. I'm not going to talk to you. It's done so much for me. And mm. I've realized, you know, when, when you post, you never know who is watching. Yeah. The internet is a very broad place. You never know who will come across your work. And that's how we've been growing. You know, we don't really post as much, but we just try to make it as, ordered as possible you know i see instagram as a portfolio people see it as a marketplace or something i see it as a portfolio so when galleries or collectors visit your page they know the structure of things they know how things are done in your company we try as much as possible to keep it very ordered and avoid unnecessary posts you know okay. yes so if, I, I, if, I, will, I will visit yeah. your your page to see so what's going do, on please. there yeah okay yeah please okay. do yeah. Good and luckily Good. for us, when you just type automatic, you just see it. Yeah. The name is very unique, so yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, we even have a website and everything. So okay, okay. T tell me, tell me, tell my audience about the general art scene in Ghana. Okay, so just okay. to see, since we are looking at. Uh, getting into art okay so in in ghana what is the is the art scene there what what's going on currently we are in the growing phase but a few artists have been lucky enough to reach an international presence and international audience sorry and it's in from my perspective i think it all started I mean, it's been, it's been around for a while, but around this time, it's just like how the Nigerian music scene has just blown up. Yeah. And ex that, that's exactly what is happening in the Ghanaian art scene. Everyone knows the Nigerian art scene is blown up. We all know how long it has taken, especially yeah. Oh, yeah. us who have lived in Africa. But we still understand that it is growing. It is being, the foundations are still being built. 
That's yes. basically the same thing that is happening in Ghana right now. We have some institutions and companies that are pushing the scene. For example, Gallery 1957. When it comes to the commercial art space, I feel like they are one of the people who have actually who sets the piece, basically. Okay. We have Ada Gallery, we have Nobuki Foundation, there are so many other, and um, Dot Atelier, which is like new, but they've done a lot since they started. And and then there's Artematis. And yep. we've all, we've all, we've all um, done a good job in nurturing our artists, developing the art scene, working on branding, drawing people to come to Ghana, because I'm not going to lie to you, the number of visitors we have every month surprises me all the time. Wow. Especially for the art scene. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. You know, we have people coming from the US, from Europe, some from Asia, and, the, and most of them are working or own companies that have, that have been in existence for over 20 years, 30 years, even 100 years. And it's it's really nice to see, you know, and the art scene is really growing. Um, yeah. Artists have the chance to 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 prove to almost everyone who claims art can make a man or make a woman. They've proven that you don't need to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or a pharmacist to make it in life. Yeah. You know, you can fo literally follow your passion and bring your ideas on a canvas or any other medium that you're trying to put it on. It's just your ideas and people love it. Same as music. People yeah. just love it and they want to interact with it. So the scene is really buzzing. You know, yeah. we, we, um, um, just last week, I was, in, I was invited to this cultural week that um, Gallery 1957 organized. And it was really amazing. I met a lot of wonderful people from around the world. And to be very honest, my engineering job wasn't giving me that. <laughs> so, you know, with engineering, of course, you meet foreigners and stuff, but it's more of just work. There's yeah. no other relationship outside that. But with the art scene, I get to meet so many amazing people, have nice conversations with them. And sometimes I even get to meet their families. It's, it's really beautiful. The networking is insane. Yeah. Yeah. See, and one of the things I enjoy the most. Yeah. Yeah. See, you see, art, uh, I'm art in the broad, in the broader, broader sense, uh, both uh, visual mm -hmm. arts, performance arts, and all that. You see, it's a, it's a different world yeah. to engineering or science. Oh, yes. Okay. It's a very different world. See, the, 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 the guys or ladies in that in industry are more relaxed. Their, their, their communication, their, their, their group are grooving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, yeah. So, see. Yeah, I'll tell you something about that even. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, lis I'm listening. I'm listening. So, so what I see is that uh, art, performance, and visual art uh, with with tourism will be a big a big deal if, or let me say, once once people like you continue growing it and attracting yeah. people from all over the world to come to Ghana, come to Nigeria, come to South Africa, come to Egypt, you know? In yeah. fact, yeah. E e Egypt yeah. as e Egypt as as is a is a major uh tourist country. Okay. So yeah. maybe yeah. we in the west of Africa and Others in the east and middle and south need to do more, much more to build our tourism industry. Because, see, I, oh, believe, yeah. I believe that Africa, when it comes to tourism, arts and all that, has a lot of things to offer, you know. And, oh, yeah. and it, will, it will earn us a lot of uh, foreign exchange, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, you are going to tell me that's... something interesting. Yes, so you know how you mentioned the difference between engineering and the art scene? Yes. So when I was in my engineering job, I used to work for a lot of hours. We were working mm. on a project. 
I haven't signed an NDA, so I can talk about it. It's a government. <laughs> we're building a, um, a power plant that used um, um, LPG. Okay. And instead of the, the only power sources we have, like the main power sources we have are all hydroelectric dams. Mm, yeah. And we they decided to do these um, ones through steam generator um, um, turbines. And it okay. was really amazing. But the demand that the job had yeah. had me working for sometimes 12 hours a day, sometimes yeah. 14 hours a day from Monday to Sunday. And the demand was crazy. The pressure was crazy. So when I left and I joined the art scene, it was so different. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be sitting in my house and I'll be thinking, oh my God, I'm wasting my life. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. <laughs> but but you're, doing work, you're doing the work, but the work is very, very different. Exactly. So it took me some time, about a year to adjust. And I, I will always, be, it got to a time my anxiety just flared up because yeah. I thought I wasn't doing anything. But I got to understand that when there's pressure in the art scene, there's pressure. Yeah. It's just that it's seasonal. Mm. But with the art, with the engineering scene, there's all, constant all pressure. Constant, all year round. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a different ball game altogether. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, it's a different ball game. Yes, yes. Now, t t tell me. See, I know that there must be challenges. Okay. See, there are challenges in every in every space. So, what what are the big challenges in the art scene in Ghana that you see? So, the main one is access to art supplies, mm. in my opinion. Some of the biggest challenges because most of the items we use are imported. Okay, okay, okay. And okay, so, so supplies for, for making the art, okay. Right, exactly, right, right, yeah, right. making the art. So canvas, paints, brushes, basically everything needed. And as I said, most of the things are imported and with the current state of things and the exchange rates of the dollar to our individual currencies, yeah, the prices and also inflation, the prices just, you know, keep soaring high and high and high. And I can't, I can't, I can't understand exactly. And in the art scene, you can't really keep increasing your prices because there's inflation. Yeah, there has to be some form of stability because people are trying to. Um, invest or be a part of your artistic journey yeah one thing collectors don't want is instability so you need to keep gradually incre increasing your prices based on factors like the number of shows you do the type of galleries you work with maybe some of the collectors or yeah. the collections that your works to be placed in whether you work at museums doing residencies and all of that so you can't really base your prices on the inflation of the country. Mm. It doesn't really work like that. Exactly. And um, art is not, um, um, what do you call it? The, 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 cons the consumption of art is different from every other product, like food or drinks or, you know, exactly. Or even clothes. Yeah. It's completely different. It's yeah. it's completely different so you can't really base your prices on inflation and the prices of art supplies and all of that so that's one challenge two um finding a space to work in mm. you know it's 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 a developing scene in europe and in america and even in asia you have a lot of foundations that are <clears throat> ready to fund your artistic practice yeah you know they can have a one-month residency, sometimes a year-long residency. And yeah. there are always, even governments of other countries outside Africa give funding to artists. Artists, you know? yes. Yeah, yeah, I remember during COVID, um, I've forgotten the, the country, but they gave, I think it's Germany, I'm not really sure. They literally give out funding to artists, you know, a monthly 
monthly um, stipends. And it was yeah. it was really amazing. I wish we had that in Ghana. But <laughs> yes, we'll get finding there. a space to work in. Oh, we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. So finding a space to work in is also another challenge. And thankfully, Artematis has help provide a space for okay. the yeah that's good it's number of artists we work with i mean we can't really help everyone one step at a time exactly so um another challenge is um um trusting collectors because mm. um human beings are human beings everyone oh, yeah. has their intentions you know yeah. and with art you can't really determine what your your collector does with your artwork you know um you based on i don't know it's it's a different um situation for everyone one may decide to develop a good relationship with the collector and tell them you know what don't sell my work immediately after you get it and galleries have done a good job with that because their relationship with collectors is based highly on trust yeah you know and um at a point in time, especially around 2021, we had a, we had a huge interest in Ghanaian artworks, and we had multiple collectors coming into the country, buying a lot of artworks, and then selling them a few months later for Ooh. ten times the price, fifteen times wow. the price. Exactly, it was it was it's called flipping, you know, and it yep. was a huge it was a huge issue. During it still happens, but. Thankfully, it hasn't really happened with us, so I'm grateful for that. And yes, so trusting collectors and finding galleries to work with. Mm -hmm. Those are, I think, the four main issues. Mm -hmm. And two of them are tied to funding. the okay. art supplies and the finding yeah. a space to work in. So I'm not really going to men mention funding because mm -hmm. funding yeah. provides you with those two things, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, see, <clears throat> talking about finding uh, art supplies, yeah. see, this is, this is one of the ma major issues we have in Africa across different sectors, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't produce basic things. For art, for example, the canvas, yeah. the brushes, those things should be things that you can find in the market. Yeah. Because I'm telling, I, I don't know where, I, but I'm sure if I want such a thing in the town I live in, okay. Mm -hmm. If I go to the town center, I'm sure I can I can get. Yeah, I won't I won't I won't be surprised. I will, can even get in multiple places. Oh yeah, and multi overflow and, and it's <laughs> it every every town you go to in England, I'm sure you can find a shop for oh, yeah. anything anything you you are looking for. It's even it's even cheaper for us to buy art supplies and give them to friends who are coming into the country mm. than buying from Ghana, and that's that's a problem. Yeah. So exactly. so see if 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 actually we we produce it at a see if anything we, we produce locally should should be cheaper. Yeah. Okay. But one one thing that affects the price of products we make in Africa is energy cost. Yeah. That this is another another thing I'm writing on because I, I mentioned that one of the reasons why uh, young Africans should, should, should stop uh jack firing <laughs> is we need to build build Africa yeah. and mainly because of climate change. It's yeah. it's, it's here. Okay. Yes, and the, the the main the main way we can survive it is to develop as fast as we can, yeah. and we need everybody working on it. Yeah. So one so, one one space that I really 
admire when it comes to creating change is the fintech space, mm. especially in Nigeria. And I think in Kenya too, Yeah, a lot of ideas are just coming up, springing up. And it's it's amazing, but it's not enough. We need more. We need more yeah. See, um, spaces. Fin you know? fintech, fintech is good. It's great. But yeah. hey, fintech is only one sector. Exactly. See? Yes. See, we need people in various sectors, okay, to step in, right? Yeah. We need people in every sector to step in. See, the truth of the matter is this. If you want to make money, big money, you can make big money in places where there are, there are a lot of problems yeah and there's no there's no there's no continent that have more problems than africa yeah okay the the only thing that that i see as the biggest issue with many of us is that we want to make money instantly exactly nobody Our nobody business. nobody is ready to say look at this strategize plan and build a have a 10 year plan mm -hmm. we have one week plan <laughs> sometimes sometimes one day okay one so, sale, so one that, sale plan. that's that's the, that's the issue so this is what i'm i'm working on with any any young person who wants to work with me, I tell them, yeah. hey, you are 25 years old. Uh -huh. 10-year plan. Yeah. Let's come up with a 10-year plan for you. By the time you are 35 years old, yeah. Things will happen, yeah. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Of course. So, but uh, very, very few people are ready to do that. Everybody yeah. wants now, 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 and, uh, and yeah. I, 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 I don't really want to point fingers, but I feel like the internet, social media, and the lifestyle of a lot of people, especially people who got money through illegal means, yeah, are really influencing a lot of young people today. Yeah, trust me, I've, I've, I've been, I've been. I've, I've, it has got me to, you know, it got me at a point thinking, you know, I'm not doing anything in my life. I, I'm, I'm a failure just because at 24 or 25, I wasn't where I envisioned myself to be. But I've learned that trust in the process also works, you know. Every yeah. day, you just do what you can do to contribute to your plan, you know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you may not have a plan, you may not have a direction, but at least just do something small you know, just step by step yeah. yeah step by step step by step step yeah. by step so listen now i want to talk about uh that journey you took okay see yeah. when you told me that you were once an engineer working in engineering sector and now you are in this art space i knew there must be something interesting to, to talk about there See, uh, anyway, you tell us your story. How did you get into engineering, mm -hmm. working in engineering, and finally decided, uh -uh, I'm going in a different direction? What happened? Okay, so right after um, university, I found myself in this company i don't want to mention their name because yeah okay yeah, yeah. um be, be fair to them we don't don't yeah our relationship didn't end well yeah so um <laughs> <laughs> i found myself in this company doing my national service and you know i had my degree with thinking i'm going to change the world with engineering and stuff <laughs> like that and then on the first day of national service they gave me um my overall, my helmet, my boots, and they took me to a workshop. 
And they were like, yeah, you completed university, but you should learn how to weld. You should learn how to cut metals. You should learn how to do fabrication. And I was like, this is not what I signed up for. But, <laughs> and I went home that day and told my mom, you know what? I cannot do this. And I'm not going to lie to you. I really appreciate my mom because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here right now. She pushed me and pushed me. and pu I'm her only son, so she's really, really particular about me. Wow. And um, I went back to work the next day and they were like, yeah, you're going to learn how to weld. I complained about, um, I'm currently wearing contact lens, but I was wearing glasses back then. I complained about it. They were like, no, and you know, at that time they had that mindset. Most of the people working there were, um, they, they were high school graduates. So okay. they have this bad energy towards um, university graduates because they know eventually they'll start earning more than them. Yeah, yeah. So you're they going try to, be, to punish both. you. Exactly. They try to punish you before. So um, I, for the first six months, I found myself doing a lot of welding, um, fab metal fabrication. I, I, and I think that's, that's actually good for you. See? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was fine. It was fine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I hated it so much, but it was, <laughs> it was fine. I mean, I've gone through it and I'm over. You know, I used to use... Um, um hacksaw machines to cut metal you know but wow. it taught me so much i Good. i understood the different types of materials you know um square pipes upm pipes up um angle bars you know the different types of pipes and yeah. what they are used for and other connecting materials and i learned so much from it but in the i think in the fourth month i started in september and then in december I was like, you know what? I'm done with this. I need to move <laughs> forward because I have really good skills when it comes to engineering drawings and engineering design. I am really and that's good what, at it. That's what you want to do. That's what I wanted to do. And that was one of the main reasons I chose engineering because at least I could get to um, invent or create things from scratch. That was my main reason for doing engineering. And they had me here welding but, and but you only metals. wanted to, You only wanted to create those things on paper. Eh? Those guys exactly. wanted to teach you how to create it. <laughs> eh? Exactly. So it helped me. It really helped me. I'll lie to you. And um, through that, I also got to understand how to work with people because I found myself both in the junior staff department. Yeah. I found myself in the senior staff department. So I could relate to both worlds. Very you know. Good. And in December, I told myself I'm not entering 2019 with um sorry 2018 i started in 2017 so i'm not yeah. entering 2018 with me working as a welder or a fabricator i'm not <laughs> doing that so i went to my project manager at the time and i told him you know what i have skills i'm really good i can literally do this work i can do engineering drawings i can do project management i can be a painting inspector i can do anything you want me to do and he looked at me and he was like who are you? What do you know? And I entered this office with these dirty <laughs> overalls, you know, with my boots and everywhere, with oil and stuff. And he asked for my qualification. And I told him where I came from, where I did my internships and all of that. And he was shocked because um, HR, did it, HR department didn't tell him who I was or where I came from. He ah. also assumed I was a high school graduate. So once he found out, he was like, you know what, let me give you a chance. And... I started working bit by bit, bit by bit. And from when I finished my national service, I found myself working multiple roles. I was a draftsman. I was um, a, a painting inspector at a point. I went into project management. I was in quality control. I was into, I was even doing document control at a point, logistics. I was just working in multiple places because they couldn't wow. place a job description on me, like one job description. And I remember one time I was helping the HR. At a point, I was even helping the HR out with um, um, the company um, structure. And she didn't know where to place me because <laughs> I was answering to everybody. Multiple people were wow. answering to me. I was just all over the place. So I advantage of it because this yeah. is how I decided to see myself and I was like you know what if I'm to run a company one day and I use the company I was working in 
as an example. Yeah. I need to understand what everyone does. Does, yeah. So I used to imagine myself as, you know what, I'll be a project manager one day. At the same time, I was running Artematics as my side hustle. But mm. my aim in my aim in that company was to be a project manager. And in order to get there, I needed to understand what everyone does because there does, were yeah. some project managers there who didn't really understand everyone's role. They yeah. depended on um, um, workshop managers or other supervisors to explain some things to them. Yeah. But I found myself in a situation where, you know, I understood everything. So it would be best if I get to that position. And getting there was really difficult. I, I never really got there. I, I got to the position before project manager. Mm. My last position before I left was project engineer. So I was one step close and I just quit. Mm. So... Um, <laughs> I, I was also applying a lot of things I learned, especially in project experiments to work on Artematis. And yeah. later on, I weighed my options and I was like, you know what? If I truly want to be happy with what I'm doing, if I want to buy my freedom, if I want to have an amazing life, I need to take a risk and work on something that is more fulfilling for me. Mm. So I just jumped from my company. I actually, months before, in the beginning of, actually in the beginning of 2021, I wrote a list of things that I wanted for that year. And I told myself that I would do whatever it takes to achieve at least 50% of what I wrote. One of them was quitting my job. One of them was more opportunities for the company. One of them was um, moving out of my mom's house. It was the most challenging thing I ever did. <laughs> because I, moved out, I moved out when I was recovering from COVID and Ooh. I had lung infections and blood clots and my mom didn't want me to leave. Yeah, it was very serious. Oh my God. I was, yeah, I was like, you know what? If I stay in this town, I don't think I'll be happy. I need to move. So I called a friend of mine, um, Ohineba. He, said, um, he was my classmate in the university. I moved to his house and the was history. In two years, everything has just changed. And I'm really grateful to God and whoever made this possible, you know. It's, yeah. So that's that basically. It's, that's that's my story. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, see it, it's interesting. The kind of journey that different people take. Okay. Uh, and careers is one thing that uh, people don't think about when they when they enter. They they never see the end. Okay, because mm -hmm. they have never thought about it. Yeah. And when they get get in there, they just do anything. Yeah. Okay. And they end up unhappy for years and years and years. Thanks. And they don't they don't do anything meaning, meaningful to change things, but they end up complaining, 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 complaining. complaining. I found myself at that point, at a, okay. at, at a point in time. I was okay. always complaining, yeah. Okay, see, what I'm tell you, telling you now, practically over 70% of people who work at jobs are working at jobs they don't like. Yeah. In, including myself when I was in banking. Okay. Okay. I did well. I did well. But I gained a lot of skills. But I wasn't really happy being... A, well, see, I tell people I'm not... Uh, I was never, never a banker. I was a bank worker. Okay. I worked in banking. 
Okay. But I was never a banker at any time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ended up working in HR, working in control, working wow. in what we call the business office. And then the closest I, I got in banking, in core banking work, was when I worked with the trade uh, operations teams. But I worked there as a back office person helping with the reconciliation and and I I carried over some of the functions of the of the uh business office. So I was working maybe in two different areas. Anyway, yeah, I get I get how that feels like yeah. good, good. So I I was never a banker, I worked across multiple roles. Yeah. supporting banking functions okay mm -hmm. now i came to the uk i continue working as a project manager working in other financial uh financial in, in, in institutions but then i made money i did my work but i wasn't really happy yeah See, that, that that was because I never sat down to ask myself, what do you want? You see, that simple question, what mm -hmm. do you want? Many people don't ever ask themselves of that question. That, that question. At all. It's as, if, it's as if they are afraid of finding out that what they want is maybe in the opposite direction of the path they're on. You see, that's true. You see, if if even if what you want is in the other direct direction, the earlier you, you the earlier you know that, the earlier you can turn around and start working towards it. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. and see, and this is what since I I I I I I find my own path, this is what I try to help other people to achieve. Either yeah. in personal life or either in a career, in in a business, because the same thing happens everywhere. Uh, yeah. Nobody ever asks themselves, what do I want? you know so um, i'm glad that you you found your path thank you, you know? yeah thank you. yeah so see i i love i love reading really mm -hmm. you see my you see my shelf right oh yeah so many books <laughs> this is one i have two other shelves in this in this room okay uh, full of books i'm now i'm now building my collection I actually good. Have good just have a few yeah yeah good so mm -hmm. what, what I'd like to do is mm -hmm. that I'd like my guests to recommend a few books for my audience, okay? See, oh, I tell yeah. them, the books my guest is going to re recommend is for you to get them and put them in, 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 li in your library. Hopefully, hopefully you will pick them up and read, you know? Yeah. So, so um, recommend mm -hmm. three Okay. Three for five books for my audience to read. Maybe so, some ad I books, think... maybe some other books. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to okay. give um, three, um, should I say self help, self help books? Okay. And then um, two fiction or fantasy fiction books. Because okay. I like to read, yes, I like to read a lot of um, fiction and fantasy. So, okay. Um, the first book I'll recommend is um, Atomic Habits by um, James Clare. Yeah. And then um, there's this other book by um, Robert Kiyosaki. Which one? Um, um, it's not Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yes. Um, why Grade A Students Work for Grade C Students. Ah, okay. okay. I, I haven't read that. I've read oh, it's uh, so three amazing. of his books. Okay. 
why yeah. why that's the only great, thing I've read actually from him. Why, why great A students work for great C great C students? Okay. And why great B students work for the government? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, I, I, that, I that's read... that's a that's a uh what what it's one one of the things he 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 described in the mm-hmm. four quad, quadrants. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I read that book right after university. I should have told that book and I'm not going to lie to you. I saw the book and he wants to me. Just took it from him. Yeah. And there's also um, a book that I've started reading. I'm on like the third page, but my friends have been recommending it to me for a while. Um, okay. Until so I think it's um Deepak Chopra. Um yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have intended to is so amazing. I have some of his books, yeah. Which oh, one? What was it title? An untethered soul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have it on, yeah. on audio audio books. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I'm 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 new to it. So I'm okay. hoping it helps me out. So yeah. for the fiction books, these are books that actually made me love reading. I I was one of the people who started reading later on, and the first book is um is actually a um. I don't want to call it a children's book, but it's really, really um, full of a lot of pictures. Um, not not pictures. Um, um, thoughtfulness. You could see the writer put a lot of thought into it, like okay. developing the. And I really love um, books and um, any type of storytelling that focuses on character development. So okay, um, it's um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I think Sorry, it's, um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't get that. Um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Ah, okay. Mm. So the, the, the main reason I was drawn to the book was because it reminded me so much of myself when I was younger. Even okay. now, I, I am quite different from a lot of people or most spaces that I find myself in. Okay. You know, uh, nice. I'm kind of the one that you call a nerd. As a child. <laughs> I'm still in it. I, I'm really I'm heavily invested in Japanese animations and um, anime. Ah, um, ah, that's that's my, yeah, my daughter. Books, yes. Yeah, um, oh wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anime. So, yeah. 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 Anime, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I really love one called um One Piece. It's I'm always looking forward to watching it. That's why I spend my weekends on. I read conspiracy theories and all of that. It, it's it's a it's a good way to pass the time, you know. And another book is um, Harry Potter. Okay, which which one? Harry Potter. Um, oh, okay, is, um, all the Harry series. Potter. Okay, yeah. Are there, all the are there series, five? There five, one. I think. Five or six. Seven. Seven. Oh Seven. man! Yeah. See, yeah. I will tell you one thing. <laughs> I have never read any. Well, I was old when it when it came out, so I never. Yeah, read yeah it. I guess it's yeah. Okay? yeah I never read it. But, but I watched. I watched maybe the three of the of the of the movies. Mm-hmm. Of Harry Harry Potter, and then uh, the Beast. What was was it? Called? Fantastic was, Beast. And yeah, to find them. I've yeah. watched. I've watched number two. I didn't. I, I didn't watch number one. So number one yeah. is better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like the whole Harry Potter series is one of the best works of fiction ever. Yeah. You know? Okay. And there's this there's this one that came out. It was actually um a play, but I had the chance to read the script. And it's called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Mm. Um, yeah, so the yeah, I read the script of the play and it was really amazing. Um, my friends and I interesting. Yeah, there's this there's this new word we all learned around the same time and discombobulated. And anytime someone mentions the book, we all make this joke about it, you know. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's also an amazing book. So, yeah, those are my recommendations. Th- yeah. Thank you, thank you. See as a as a young child i i loved reading oh my god Mm -hmm. but then when i was a teenager i read Mm -hmm. i i i I read pacitus the oh yeah pacitus i read i read 100 101 yeah and then i read i read uh, James Hadley Chase. I read one hundred. Okay. Wow. I left. I left there. Then I, 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 I got into Harold Robbins, and then so 
as a young person, I read 99% fiction books. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. It really for influences me, for, the for me now, yeah. uh, all the things I've read in the last eight years are, yeah. oh, in the last eight years, I've read maybe 220 books and maybe 210 of them are non-fiction. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I, see, that's that's what I do. See, economics, history, mm -hmm. philosophy, mm -hmm. science, all that. Yeah. See, uh, on this table, for me, these are, for me, these are, these are the books I just I just mm -hmm. got. See, and then and write. Wow, this this I'm just I'm just scared to start this because it's too big. That's, that's <laughs> and a, and a it's, it's 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 a, it's a, it's <laughs> fiction. Fiction, but if wow. fiction and philosophy, okay, Atlas mm -hmm. Atlas Shrug, okay, yeah. and then this was recommended to me uh, the the prosperity paradox by one of my guests, okay, it was recommended to me, so I bought it, and then this uh, power and progress, you know, it's it's mostly economics. So these okay. are the books I, I just bought this week. Oh, no, okay. last week. I'm actually you know. writing them down right now. So. <laughs> yeah. So I For see. Me, I, I, I love. I, I love. I love books. books yeah. You know. I, I just I'm, finished. Like I said, uh, I'm really, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm I just sorry. Finished. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Go on. Yeah, I'm late to reading. I actually started reading when I was almost about to finish university. Wow. I mean, I've been reading mostly children. Yeah, I know. I know. I know I was, what you mean. But yeah. see. Yeah, See, I was stuck oh. on um R.L. Stein. Yeah. So I was mostly watching TV because, you know, back then, you know, my mom and I, we went to a lot. So it was <laughs> really difficult for us to get access to books. So mm. I was always glued to my TV. Yeah. Always. And I learned so much. And I remember one time I was in school, I mean, primary school, and um, our teacher just asked randomly, who is the god of the sun in Egypt or something like that? Yeah. And I was like, rah. And he looked at me and he was shocked because I, I I don't know. My friends were even shocked. And everyone was like, How did you know this? This, that, this, that. And I told them I was watching the Discovery Channel. I was watching National Geographic. And yeah. that's what I used to do. Almost all the time, I'll just be stuck on National Geographic. And that was what I grew up on. And mm. the way mm. the universe works is so funny. At a time this year, I was actually featured on National Geographic. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that when, article. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When when the article came out, I mean they, they came around to interview the company and everyone involved. And I didn't really know it would come out because sometimes that's how they have um, mm -hmm. some journalists come around, interview, pitch, and if it comes out fine, if it doesn't. And when it came out, that was one of the happiest moments of my my year. I'm not going to lie to you. So yeah, it's 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 really amazing. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, I'm I'm new to reading. Um, fairly new, and yeah. it's it's really good. It's no, nice don't movie. don't don't worry. The good yeah. the thing about reading it helps you with your imagination as well. It's see, really really. I'm nice telling you. It. I'm telling. See, really you're you you. into it now. See, mm -hmm. when you when you when you dig into books, oh my god, see. It's all a whole the universe out there. Uh, yeah. History. History, mm -hmm. I have my God. History is fascinating. Fascinating. Wow. You know. So yeah. So that, that's why I'm trying to encourage young Africans to read. Okay. It's very so, necessary. Uh I hear young Africans always complain about oh uh about our colonization and this and that. Yeah, it happened, okay? And some of them say they won't read certain books because they are written by the West. That, uh, oh, I, I mean, I hear all manner of things that- uh, Knowledge is knowledge. So. <laughs> that uh, that uh, they are trying to indoctrinate Africans. But, so the, my, 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 my question to them is this, are those books written for Africans? No. Okay, they were written for their own people. Okay, yeah. so if you want to know what their own people know, read the books. 
<laughs> that's it. Oh yeah. yeah. If if yeah. if we re refuse to read those books, then those people know something that we don't know. That you don't know. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. So anyway, anyway. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell my audience one of two things they can do to add a little bit of value to the society. What can it do? Um, so before I start, I just want to say that no dream is too big to achieve. Okay. Agreed. That's 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 one thing. And um the fact that you can think of something means it's possible. Yeah. You just need to put it in the work. And what I would say in terms of contribution to society, no matter what field you find yourself in, every human being came to this earth to accomplish something different. And it's all for the collective benefits of the human race. Yeah. So never underestimate your purpose in life. Never underestimate your purpose in, in what we know as um, um, the continuation of the human race. Mm. no matter how big or small your gifts or talents are never feel they are too small and never feel they are too big okay you are where you are for a reason and you need to try as much as possible to do what you can to help the community you are in if you feel like or if you have a deep feeling that your community is not receptive of what you are trying to do just leave mm. the world is so big i mean it's difficult to leave from one place to another but yeah. there are steps and there are processes to everything yeah the world is basically yours whether it's saudi arabia or china or japan or usa you see yourself in just aim towards it the world is so huge you have so many um europeans and americans working in ghana because they know what they are trying to do here same yeah. way you have a lot of africans working outside so i mean it would be nice to try and develop your country, your continent, or whatever. But if you feel like you can go and learn outside and bring it in here, yeah, it's fine. If you feel like you want to go outside and you don't want to come here, it's fine. If you feel like you want to stay here and do what you can do to help, it's also fine. Just be diligent and do it to the best of your ability. That's all I have to say. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. See, we, like you said, we all have uh, something yeah. that uh, our creator put in us yeah. to try to achieve, okay? Mm -hmm. So we all just need to do our best. Yeah, exactly. right, right. My last question, what is your vision for Africa in the next 30 years? See, in the next 30 years. Africa okay. is yours. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yours and people of your age. Okay. People like yeah. me who are too old. Hmm? <laughs> okay. So yeah. no matter what, what we do, eh, you guys yeah, are going, yeah. going to carry it. Hmm? Good or bad. Yes. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so what's your uh, vision? Yeah. My vision. Um one thing I'm actually looking forward, forward to is the evolution in architecture in the continent. Mm. I feel like um, with, when the right steps are taken, we will gradually shift from the current style of buildings we have, especially in Accra. I'm not a huge fan of um, the type of buildings we have in Accra. And I feel like with the right steps, we will transition into something else because we happen to be in a different climate. You yeah. happen to be in a different system. There's sand everywhere, you know. And with the type of buildings that we have, especially with glass all over the place, I feel like, actually, I believe that things are going to change in terms mm. of architecture, road network, access to um, spaces, ease of access. Yeah. And I also envision better health systems in the continent. Yeah, I am building better industries and greater minds coming forth. Luckily for us, 
um, we happen to be born, especially those in my generation, happen to be born when the world was transitioning into the age of the internet. And we've got our fair share of it. And I feel like with all the information that we have, I mean, the internet is a tool. Yeah. You can, it's, it's a good servant and a bad master, basically. It's just like fire, <laughs> it's like everything else that we need. So um, the internet serves as a great tool to connect and basically build the world you are trying to live in. Yeah. And with the collective effort of every single person who has decided to dedicate themselves into building a better future, I really have hope for Africa. It will take a lot of work. It will take a lot of changes, which we've started seeing. Yeah. I'm not going to mention names. Yes. So hopefully all these changes that are happening will collectively contribute to the future that we see. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And like I said, the world is yours. Thank you. And I wow. It. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for being Me a too. great guest. Of think big for think big for Africa. I appreciate the opportunity and it's good. And good, I also good, like good. to thank um, Tarek for making this possible. Yes, you know, for yes. me to you. Yeah, of course, of course, Tarek. Yeah, you know. See, uh, I'm hoping that uh, very soon I'll be in in Ghana, and uh, yeah, I will keep it. I will keep in touch because when I'm traveling to Africa. I would like to, when I get to a, a particular city, I would like mm -hmm. to meet uh, my guest on, on, on the podcast and maybe we'll Always have a, 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 a live one-on-one -on -one chat, you know? Oh, yeah. even better. Yeah, even Good. better. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Always welcome. Yeah. Right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a nice night. Okay. You too. Bye.